The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle Read by Stephen Fry Forward by Stephen Fry So memorable and evocative is the opening sentence of this collection of Sherlock Holmes stories that many people believe them to be the first words of the whole series. To Sherlock Holmes, she is always the woman. In fact, the public first met the great detective and his faithful chronicler in two novels, A Study in Scarlet and The Sign of Four. But it was this collection of short stories, with its stunning variety of high and low locales, its deft and startling touches of the macabre, the passionate and the humorous, its unique originality and brilliance in plotting, character and suspense, that really cemented the characters into the public imagination and set the seal on their author, Arthur Conan Doyle's, reputation. The cosy certainties of the snug bachelor rooms in Baker Street contrast perfectly with the opium dens, grand saloons, country houses and suburban villas where terrible vengeances, daring robberies, bloody murders, cruel swindles, violent amputations and inexplicable disappearances take place. And above all, where the fog of mystery is dispelled and cleared, by the mind of the world's first and greatest master detective. This collection contains some of the most cherished and memorable of all the Sherlock Holmes exploits. The Blue Carbuncle remains a classic Victorian Christmas tale, rich with an almost Dickensian yuletide spirit and comic brio. Holmes's examination of Mr. Henry Baker's pathetic hat and the inferences he draws from it are a priceless example of the detective's signature ability to read so much from apparently so little. But the terror, cruelty and fright of the story called The Speckled Band belongs in any anthology not just of great detective stories but of great tales of horror. Time and time again, generations have shown that they need Holmes. Something in his assured blend of omniscience and infinite tenacity, humanised with intriguing character flaws, speaks deeply to our need for solutions to the problems of our own very different world today. We watch him and the faithful Watson, our reliable narrator, descend the seventeen steps from their upper-story rooms and out into Baker Street, and we feel reassured. Holmes's famous magnifying glass and accompanying habit of crawling around on all fours at the scene of a crime, like a foxhound, was perhaps the first suggestion, in literature at least, that the tiniest of traces can tell a story can play out the narrative of a crime scene and lead back inevitably to its perpetrators and victims. His cigar ash, footprints and almost invisible tell-tale particles are the forerunners of the crime lab's mitochondrial DNA, epithelial particles and microfibers. His magnifying glass gives way to today's electron-scanning microscope. But the principles are quite unchanged, which is why he is the presiding spirit behind every CSI operative and why the modern Scotland Yard criminal database, the Home Office Large Major Inquiry System, has initials that spell out the name Holmes. It is no accident that Conan Doyle was, like Watson, a fully qualified doctor. He knew that throughout the 19th century, medical science had advanced anatomy, the microscope, and the systematic empirical observation of all kinds of phenomena. London had moved from an unhealthy, cholera-ridden metropolis of death to the template of a modern city. 
If germs and bacilli could be isolated and pathologies identified through patient study, close attention and rigorous thinking, couldn't social diseases too? Mightn't there be a great crime doctor who could put a metaphorical stethoscope to the heart of the nation, take the pulse of society, place a thermometer under the tongue of a whole people? cleanse the morally foul with fresh running water. From observing this tremble, that wound, wheeze or wart, might he not be able to diagnose and cure the wickedness of the world? Well, I don't suppose Conan Doyle or the Victorian public believed anything quite so utopian or complete, but the idea of crime as disease and detective as doctor has persisted, right up to American TV's enormously successful drama House, which was consciously modelled on Conan Doyle's prototype. There's not much distance between House and Holmes, after all, as words or characters. House takes the cases that no one else can solve. He has a drug problem and a cold, logical manner that puts some people off. His partner and faithful but sometimes nagging friend is called not Watson, but Wilson. I recall, too, a Sylvester Stallone movie called Cobra, whose publicity posters shouted, Crime is a disease. Meet the cure. Needless to say, Sly's modus operandi was not quite the same as Holmes's. But the idea persists. We need someone like Holmes. As Watson tells him in the pitch-perfect story, The Red-Headed League, second in the collection you are about to hear, you reasoned it so beautifully. It is so long a chain, and yet every link rings true. You are a benefactor to the race. Amen to that. Popular fiction offers different kinds of superhero to save the world by restoring order to the chaos, confusion and criminality of our times. Heroes with remarkable gifts are as in vogue now as they have been since they first appeared, perhaps even more in vogue. But although the very first one was launched in serial published form, just like his masked and body-suited successors, it was not in DC or Marvel comic books that he made his appearance. Rather, it was in the sedate and respectable pages of Mrs. Beaton's Christmas Annual in the mid-Victorian year 1887. This caped crusader's cape was made of finest British tweed. His magical gifts were not the ability to fly or X-ray vision. His superpower was that he had trained his mind into a uniquely powerful weapon which could solve mysteries, unmask the guilty, and right wrongs. You'll believe a mind can fly as you watch him soar way, way above the cosy fog of the metropolis. This superman can see through solid barriers impenetrable to others. None of the supervillains or henchmen ranged against him can withstand the laser blast of his logical analysis or the vice-like grip of his deductive reasoning. He stands for truth, justice, and the British way, and his name is Sherlock Holmes. Accept no substitute. <laughs> 